Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Schmidt and Lavelle. My name is Tom Lavelle, and as always, I'm accompanied by Mr. Timothy Schmidt. What's up, Tommy boy? We're here. We made it. Um, Timmy uh, is trying to get his stuff for, for work done. He's getting thrown curveballs left and right. We had our internet going in and out last night. But we're here. We're making it. We're putting it out. And uh, first things first, we want to thank you, the listener, the people out there listening. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for listening. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Schmidt and Lavelle, now's the time to to get in on the ground floor of this Tommy, stock that's rising. I don't think a lot of people are telling their friends or family lately. Yeah. Start telling, guys. What the heck? What's your... What about a, what about a good topic at the, at the Christmas table? You know, at dinner? Or even New Year's at the party. He's just, you know, shooting the shit. Hey, did you hear that Schmidt Lavelle show yet? It's incredible. Well, something that we want to talk about, and let's just start right now, is we've got a big, and something new, and we, we promised some new things for the Schmidt Lavelle show, and lo and behold, right off into the new year, we're going to be doing it this Friday. We have an appointment set. If you've been listening, you know that I lost the fantasy football bet that was the head-to-head -head matchup in the playoffs. I lost. We let the people decide because we are men of the people. We let them decide, and it came down to a waxing. And I will be getting my chest waxed this Friday, seven rips, filming it. We're going to be airing it on the uh, on YouTube. We can watch the whole thing. Obviously, we'll have highlights on uh TikTok and Twitter and Instagram for for people to see the short clips, but those will just be teases to the whole thing. And I am excited for the fact that we're doing something new and we're uh, moving in a step forward. I would like to think in kind of creating content and building that 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 you know brand of Schmidt and Lavelle and just doing some goofy funny stuff. I'm not so much excited for the waxing, Tim. <laughs> it's a good start. It's a good start to the new year. It yeah. makes me happy. Uh, looking for, I'm hoping to get in on the act here, Tom. I'm, I know, I know. I'll let these, you get a rip in. I know these people uh, pretty personally. Uh, we're going to and Judge Aesthetics there on uh, Germantown, Germantown Pike, uh, and we're we're looking forward to to Tommy getting his rips in. You know, for the new year, his wife is going to be real happy with the way he looks after this waxing. I'll tell you, <laughs> he's going to be quite the aerodynamic individual in the sack. You know, yeah. I'm going to be like Michael Phelps in the in the sack. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm really not looking forward to it. One, uh, you know what the thing I'm concerned about most is, and it's not the, uh, it's not so much the actual ripping which i'm not looking forward to that it's just how disgusting looking i am and how that's going to be all over the the intraweb you know my pale pasty hairy body that hasn't hit a gym since a 15 month old was born you know it's just yeah but you you fast with the best of them tom don't i you? i do fast and i'm i'm currently uh just at the end of day two of my my second fast that I've been doing. So my ironically on Friday, that will be the end of my fast. So plans, I think to go out and get something to eat afterwards. And, uh, you know, that will be my, my first, uh, my first food since Monday. You're going to take that shirt off. You're going to look like ET when the flower died. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm mean, you know what it is? is I got all this shit around my fucking gut, you know, and I just wish it was gone. I don't think anybody really cares. You know how it's like sometimes you're more critical of yourself than anyone really gives a shit. But like, I'm just like, ugh, how disgusting. You know what I mean? Like a, like a, like a, like, a giant chewed up piece of bubble gum. <laughs> like a, like kind of like a. I don't know, like a potato that's filled with jelly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have no idea. You got a good visual there. A very pale potato, yeah, filled with jelly. But either way, it should le it should lead to some uh, funny, uh, funny content. I'm I'm imagining. I'm gonna try to go in like I don't want to do this thing. Like I'm not planning on yelling a certain phrase or something like that. I don't want to rip off forty year old virgin or anything like that. Like. I'm going to go in and 
just I'm trying to be as natural as possible while getting waxed, like authentic, if that makes sense. So like I'm trying yeah, to have no, like I, a, a clear flow mind going, and then what happens happens. I don't want any predetermined stunts or yelling or whatever. Look, we've we've seen these videos before. Obviously, everyone's seen forty year old version. That's that's obviously the the benchmark right there, Tom. It's mm. uh, but. I've seen other videos on TikTok and social media, and it seems to have the same type of reaction anywhere you go for, for adult males who don't do this on a regular basis. So, Tom, I'm sure your reaction is going to be plenty authentic. I'm, I'm sure that the Schmidt and Lavellites out there are, are really going to enjoy what they see uh, from our little visit to and Judge Aesthetics on Friday. And Judge Aesthetics, and we'll be tagging her, obviously, in the videos. And you know what? The good thing is, too, maybe uh, guys and girls out there listening, you'll be able to see uh, what they have to offer. And they have a lot of stuff to offer if you're interested in. You know, I think they do Botox and waxing and all this other stuff. You know, maybe I'll get my Skin wife a, a, a gift card yeah. to there or something while we're there. But, uh, you know, we're going to have a we have someone uh, I think that's going to help us film. And maybe we can get another person. I'd like to film with the camera that I got and also have the phone going. But maybe you can just do the phone as much as possible, you know, or we'll have him go back and forth from uh, the camera to the phone. You know what I mean? Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, are you, I guess you're looking forward to this, Tim, huh? I am. I am. After my bailout of the fantasy football playoffs, uh, nothing is going to please me more than watching you get waxed. On Friday, <laughs> I got waxed in the playoffs, and I'm getting waxed again. So yeah, we'll be we will be hopefully airing that video. I mean, I guess we'll try to have it out by next week, the full thing. You know what I mean? We'll have the teasers and stuff like that for the socials, but the full video, maybe like a Monday, a Monday reveal or something. You know, like uh, yeah. the full video on YouTube. So sure. I hope hopefully everyone is looking forward to that. All right, Timmy. Let's get into uh, some comments from this past week. We're going to talk to our, our comments, and let's get into our first couple comments from the Charger video. Put out a video about you talking about getting your daughter a iPad, and you slipped up and you said you got her an iPad charger, and we just ran with that. I thought it was a really funny video. Look at me. I got a charger. <laughs> D-Toper Fitness says, swinging it around. Ha, ha, ha. I loved, Timmy, when you said... uh. I am so ready for this iPad. <laughs> oh, can't wait for this iPad, baby. <laughs> I'm get fully charged up. <laughs> you know, I mean, it would be cruel to give an iPad without a charger. You know what yeah. I mean? So now the charger's there. You're well, ready to go. A little ironic, Todd, because <laughs> upon dropping my daughter off after Christmas, I... <laughs> I looked in my center console of my car and realized that I did not give her the charger that comes with the iPad. <laughs> now, a regular iPhone charger, will that work for an iPad? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't, I mean, I didn't check, but I looked in the in my center console and I was like, shit, I wonder if she has the ability to, to charge that, but I didn't, I forgot to give it to her. You know what's cool with that was my kid, and I know you had talked about getting text messages or something like that. My son, Mickey, sends me text messages from his iPad. It's an email, but he, he yeah. sends it via text. Yeah. So that's something that she can do too cool that you can get a... Yeah, we're, st we're still working on that. You know, my... Uh... Never mind. I'm not going to get it. Yeah, yeah. Too. Well, you could set it up, you know, the email and then she... Oh, can it's, set uh, it oh it's set up. It's set up. <laughs> If only it was charged. Mm. <laughs> All right. From the Will Smith video that we put out from Jesse Kerp. It's the laughs for me. I love watching your videos. Well, thank you, Jesse Kerp. We love putting them out and we appreciate that you like them. From that Eagles kid. Ha ha ha, Timmy. I'm dying over you guys dying again. <laughs> People, some I guess they like our laughs. Ha! Hey. <laughs> maybe we should just start laughing and just put out an hour of laughs um, uh, from 311 Phillies listening to the new episode and I haven't heard anything about this Will Smith stuff either crazy 
Yeah, it is a crazy situation, and there's some levels to that. You know, Jada Pinkett Smith, like we said, has responded and saying that she's going to take legal actions. It's totally ridiculous what this guy is saying, yada, yeah. yada, yada. And then the other guy came out and is kind of calling her bluff and saying, well, there's more, and I got receipts. So as it unfolds, maybe we'll be talking about it on the show. Yeah, and there's a way that like Hollywood controls – a lot of that information anytime like you always see like sometimes like like a sex video goes out or like a, a nude photo and all of a sudden it disappears from the internet right like it's it just vanishes right and it seems like this is being a little bit suppressed as well um yeah there's yeah there's people in hollywood that control like the the highway of information and i feel like uh i feel like that's that that might be what the, the scenario is right now tom like, like for instance, like if you saw on ESPN on the uh, the playoffs, uh, the college football playoff, they were down Bourbon Street and they they happened to call catch a bystander. Yes, flashing the cat. If that was a celebrity, that probably would have been gone. That been fun. it would have been on the social media right now. But it's all over the place, Tom. <laughs> it's all over. Yeah, it, it, they, I did see that. I mean, I didn't actually see the video. I just saw like online that it said, you know, that they had shown a thing of bourbon street and some lady was flashing just kind of having to be flashing there and it's like it's i love those videos too like you'll see uh like some announcer or some like uh news anchor will be out in the vehicle let me ask what this person has to say and the guy comes up and goes fuck her in the pussy (laughs) or something (laughs) like that well tom i if if we have our schmidt and volleys that listen to the show they know as soon as i saw bourbon street i was automatically out I out. hate for I hate Bourbon Street. I'm out. Never going back again. It's a trash place. It's a trash street. We're it sick also, of it. It ultimately it brought me back to my little trip down to Baton Rouge. But. Baton Rouge. All right. So S Madden 10. I was going back and listening to old albums or rappers I like, and this song came on the new anthem for Schmidt and Lavelle. It's by R.A. The Rugged Man. The name of the song? Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I would play it, but I think we'll get copyrighted. But check that song out, and we'll see if that can become the new anthem of Schmidt and Lavelle. Dumb by R.A. The Rugged Man. I never even heard of this, The Rugged Man, you know? Yeah. Tom, I, I have to say, I, I don't hear any comments from uh, our one of our most followed listeners or i should say one of our listeners that follows us the most and comments the most he's the huxtable Mm, well i do have we're we're getting to that okay all right so from mr maddie diz he says i'm a regular listener now keep it up fellas still trying to get a hold of your schedule but i think new ones drop once a week and that's right we do have new episodes every week they air on thursday the goal is to put out our other show, Jabroni Drive, on Wednesday and Schmidt Lavelle on Thursday. Sometimes, especially with like the Eagles schedule, the Phillies schedule, Wi-Fi getting knocked out, jobs, dads, whatever, it doesn't happen on Wednesday, but we always have our episodes out on Thursday. So please, if you if we don't see a Jabroni Drive on Wednesday, it will be there on Thursday, and Schmidt Lavelle always aired on Thursday. So Thursdays is when everything is out. Wednesdays usually for Jabroni Drive. All right. This goes to Mr. He Stiff Huxtable. Now, before we get into his comment, Tim, this past week, a magical moment for Schmidt and Lavelle. I had the pleasure of meeting for the first time Mr. He Stiff. And what a guy. I lo- I a charming individual, I must say, and we I I feel like we connected really well. You know, he's a funny guy. We had some good conversation, and it was nice to finally meet the man behind the comments. I will say this: that I said to him, I regretted not naming for the year our listener of the year, Mister He Stiff, and he's he's been a he's been a consistent listener commenter. And I, I just love his interaction with us on YouTube and social media, sharing our stuff. Other, obviously, other listeners were also in the runnings for that. But I mean, he was he was right at the top of the list, Timmy. What a surprise it was for me to meet him. 
Uh, well, yeah, he stiff is uh, he's a good friend of mine and always uh, been a supporter of the, the Schmidt household, the Schmidt family and uh, appreciate and tuning in and, and carrying the torch for the Schmidt Lavelle show from day one. He's been, he's been the loyal listener, the loyal subscriber. And it was great to get you two in the room to see uh, yeah, the interaction between you guys. So you was, were was... standing there like a, like a, like a, <laughs> You know, just a smile on your face. Like, look at this. Look at these two. <laughs> beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. <laughs> so, Mr. Heastiff had to say, a while back, I told Tom to relax because the birds haven't played their best ball yet. We've seen the best that this 2023-2024 team has to offer. So, I guess a while ago when we were talking about the Eagles and they had a really good record and we were kind of – dissecting where they were going and what's going on and the frustrations of them even when they won he was like relax we can still win and we had that hope but now it's it's just not looking good tim it's not no. looking uh like it doesn't look like a super bowl but you never know we're in the playoffs and that's uh that's all that matters right yeah i mean it's it's a shame because this team this season has really gone off the rails and you couldn't really predict it, really. I mean, look, I mean, most people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it from the from start. And I was the guy that said, listen, the teams find a way to win. And they were doing that for, you know, the better part of the year, 11 weeks. And then they got into the tougher part of the schedule and they got through it pretty decently. Uh, and then it just went off the rails, man. And it's they're finding ways to lose now. And the defense has been uh, atrocious. It, yeah, the defense coordinator change has not really made a difference. Um, and you can't really pinpoint exactly what it is. But for me, it seems like coaching. Um, but ultimately, the players have to play. Um, you have to at some point yeah, say, look, this is my job. I got to go out and do my job and, and execute at a high level. And they're just not doing it. And this is the result of that, Tom. They're, they're now in the five seed. They've lost home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Everything that they kept on saying that they had in front of them is no longer in front of them. They don't control their own destiny now. They got to go on the road now and pretty much win every game to get into the playoff or get into the Super Bowl. Um, hey, they made their own bed and uh, we'll see what happens. But as you said, it doesn't feel like a Super Bowl year. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some changes in the offseason, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where the Eagles take us. Yeah, and uh, it's just frustrating. I think the the big thing is I feel like we get in our own way, the Eagles. Like, there's so much – it seems like – it feels like there's a ton of talent on the team, and I guess it's just they are who they are at this point. But, you know, it just gets frustrating because I'm like, we're better than this. Why are we playing so poorly? Like, we've seen them play better than this, and they're just not doing it this year yet. Who knows? You never know. They could turn it around and – God, I hope they do, because that would be awesome. All right, Timmy, let's get into some other stuff. Now, the the Eagles are going to be underdogs, and hungry dogs run faster, as they say, right? And we've been dogs before, and we've come out of sight. We were talking at the bar this past week when we're coming up for topics of the show, and just like a funny thing about dogs. It's just a bizarre thing. I think you'd mentioned it. You go ahead and take the lead on this one. It, it, look, I'm a dog lover. I I hate taking care of dogs. Like that's that's the big thing for me. Is like taking them for a walk, walk, you know, making them go like go outside and go to the bathroom, and like that's really where the crux of it comes in for me, Tom. <laughs> and you just see it all the time. I was downtown the other day, and I'm like, I'm walking. You know, city block to city block, and there's there's just people with their dogs and their leashes, and they're just basically waiting for their dog to take a shit, <laughs> and and they just <laughs> they just scoop it up right behind them, and I just look my kids. I have two kids. I created those kids. Okay, so I'm okay with cleaning up their shit. I did it for years. Okay. I just don't understand like the whole process of uh, hey, let's go take the dog for a walk. And then just like you're walking behind the dog waiting for it to shit. And then you just scoop it right up 
And then you put it in a bag, and you hold on to it for a couple blocks. Like, you're just carrying around dog shit. I don't get it. <laughs> it it's, just, it's just strange. I actually saw a guy up in Doylestown, like, catching dog shit before it hit the ground with a bag. I'm like, what? Is, this, it's just kind of demeaning to me. Like, that just this primitive animal is has got you by the balls that you have to catch it shit. like <laughs> yeah like it's just, it is bizarre that like we're like following around the dogs waiting to just clean up after it and then having to carry the bag like the bag of shame the bag of dog shit that you're yeah. just carrying around waiting for the opportunity to throw it out you know you don't now, is it a, is it a like if you're doing that and you see a trash say there's a trash can out there, right? A neighbor's trash can that's uh maybe it's trash day. You're walking the dog, you picked up some trash and you see a neighbor's trash can out there. Is it all right to drop that in there? You dropping would, your dog's uh shit in the neighbor's trash? Not if it's just got emptied. Like I I've been a victim of that where yeah, you know, the trash cans are out, they've just been dumped and some asshole walks down the street and throws in his pile of shit that his dog just left on my lawn. Thank you for cleaning it up, but don't throw it in my goddamn trash can. That's going to be in there for another week. Right. It has to be a pre, like, if it's out and they're taking the trash tomorrow morning, okay. Yeah. But yeah. if it's, they took the trash in the morning and you're walking by, no. Nah. Yeah. Uh-uh. Can't do that. Dumb. I, I, and I will and say- the worst is leaving, obviously, leaving the shit, like, People get into fist fight. There's been notes. I remember walking by and seeing a note posted on someone's yard. If your dog takes a sh- I will find out where you live and bring it to your house. You know? <laughs> so, I Listen, so I have been a victim of this when I was a kid. Not so much anymore. And I don't know if, if that's on where I travel as an adult or where I traveled as a kid. But I haven't stepped in dog shit in a long time. And that's that's a good thing because maybe people are are really taking care of their their animals and cleaning up after their shit, but at the same time, I'm not running around in fields anymore, and you know, I'm not I'm not playing around in playgrounds and and shit like that. So yeah, you know. know what? When I was a kid, I felt like I stepped in more dog shit than I do now. It was oh, like dude. at least once a year I was stepping in dog shit. Ah, oh, dude, more than that. I would say it was like at least once a month where I was stepping in shit left and right. And then you'd have to like, you'd find a corner of like a step and you're wiping it off. You're like, oh, or a God. stick, a twig, yeah. and you're like digging the, the shit out. And... and it gets in the grooves and you just, you're, oh, dude. The worst is like when you go in a house and you don't realize that you had dog shit on your, oh, on your foot. Well, that's like no someone's good. mom is like, Who's that the dog shit? You're like, wasn't me. You look down and like all your buddies are like, yeah, it's on your left shoe. You're like, fuck. <laughs> you're like, got to go outside and get hosed down. Yeah, I think, you know, plus stepping on dog shit usually is like, you know, when you stepped, it's not like mud. There's like a slip. You're on dry grass, like you're on grass and then you slip and then it's like, and you're like, oh no, what did I just step in? Well, yeah, it's not, it's not a, it's not a good thing. All right, dogs, let's start cleaning up after yourself, all right? <laughs> Timmy, we have a question that we need to pose to you. Timmy, if you're drinking, well, why don't you set the scene? You were at your house the other day. I believe your sister had ordered something to be delivered via, you know, I don't know oh. what, what the app is or whatever it is, but it was, I believe Starbucks was delivered to your house, and they delivered the wrong order, right? Yeah, yeah. So I um so all the people out there, I, I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. Never. Not once. Not like a full cup of coffee at all. I go to Starbucks, I get the uh the caramel apple spice, which is the closest I get to a, a coffee. All right. And that's just like apple cider. That's all it is. Warmed up apple cider, which is fantastic. Yeah, check that out. Um wait, is it a and, coffee? No, it's just like apple cider that's hot and they put like whipped cream in it it's fantastic they, they have that year round well i don't drink it in the summertime it's almost not a psycho well like Who could i get it? it now or is it like a holiday yes. thing no nah, you can get it right now you go oh there, wow caramel apple spice it's fantastic it's that fantastic. sounds good um so i'm sitting at the table and uh 
I think I came in from somewhere and my sister's like, Hey, there's this thing on it on the table. She goes, It's like a vanilla frappuccino. She goes, You'd probably actually it's an iced vanilla frappuccino. She's like, You'd probably like it. And again, I've never had any coffee in my life. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't I'll give it a shot. So it was accidentally delivered to our house. It wasn't my sister's order. It just showed up. So like maybe they the, they got the address wrong or whatever. So, you know, you're you're not sure whether or not you want to drink because it's not something you ordered. But it was sitting there and I started going through my brain about like how I never drank coffee before. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have it. I've had this thing. I'm going to go after it. And dude, I sucked that thing down in about in about a minute and a half. I it, dude, it was fantastic, delicious. It, it was so good. And, and you had the whipped cream and the caramel right on the top, yeah. the drizzle, and then the probably yeah. the vanilla squirts in there. And uh, you know, it's probably yeah. like just a minimal amount of coffee, and then they blend it all up. <laughs> oh, but it was it was delicious. So like, I started texting my sister. I said, "Do I?" Did I have a couple? Is this count as coffee? Am I am I in the coffee club now? Or am I? Look, I would it, say, and I'm a I'm a black coffee drinker. I drink coffee black. I don't drink it for. I don't want the cream in there, the sugar, all that. I eat enough junk. I don't need to be doing it to. I'm really just drinking coffee for the effects. I'm trying to get the the jolt, the uh, the energy well, burst. You know. Well, that was that was my second question to my sister was. If I go to this Starbucks and I go and order this thing and yeah, like I show up to golf with the boys or are the boys going to be making fun of me because I'm not a man because I'm drinking a Frappuccino or is the, is the lady, the, the barista at, at Starbucks going to question whether uh, my pronoun is actually a he and not a she like am I, I think am you I... already know the answer to that question. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> if you're asking yeah. the question, I think you already know the answer. Yeah. I don't know about the barista, but definitely at golf. I mean, I just can't imagine people just letting that slide. You showing up with a whipped cream top, frozen caramel mocha frappuccino, whatever the hell yeah. it is. I get and a whole like, one. Like, get, yeah, get me, get me a Coors Light and a. I got my frappuccino. I'm ready to go, boys. <laughs> I'll tell you what; it'd probably be great with some like vodka, or uh, you know, you could probably throw something in that that would be delicious. Jameson's, you know, kind of like a Irish coffee yeah. frappuccino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, she, so, them. So the ruling is, Tom, that it is not, in fact, a coffee. Nah, uh-uh. that's a milkshake, dude. That is uh-huh. a milkshake from a coffee. I drink coffee every day, and that so, is a milkshake. Now, I will tell you this, Tom. Uh, in the last two months, I've been drinking every once in a while an espresso martini. Ooh, I've now never that, had one, and I people have been raving about espresso martinis. Now, that's a good item. And I say, if I can find the non-alcoholic version of that, I think I'm in on coffee. Okay. I mean... I'm sure they have something. What do they have? I think they have like a whipped espresso or something like that. We get your your frothiness, you know, your like a espresso. double, like a double shot of espresso. Is that like something they put in? Or can it's, I drink like a? Don't they have like the can Starbucks drinks? Can I? Yeah, can I do that. You, I mean, I don't think that's coffee either. But like, you know, <laughs> it'll be. I mean, you're getting all the flavors and stuff like that in there. Don't get me wrong; it's delicious. I would drink it. I would think it's tasty. I just try to stay away from it on a regular basis. But I get an Americano, which is just espresso with water mixed up. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a watered down coffee. But, uh, you know, the espresso itself doesn't taste like you wouldn't just want to get a double espresso. You would need some stuff mixed in there. You know what I mean? So I would go to them and maybe explain your situation. Hey, I love espresso martinis. I'm not a big fan of coffee. How do I make something like nice with some espresso? They probably have a whole a whole lineup of doodads for that. What about our, <laughs> our I mean our our listeners can help us out. I mean, we got people to follow us that probably have the same issue that I have. That aren't coffee fans but are looking for like uh Well, little... Tom, my 
my why don't you you just don't like coffee you never tried it you're just like i get yeah, it. like so... it's an acquired thing you don't really love it well number one my new year's resolution was giving up red bull so i've given up red bull i'm oh. off red bull i'm off energy drinks i'm done with that wow. number two my second grade teacher mrs mcgonagall used to come in and she would she would smoke cigarettes and she would also have um coffee breath and I remember her like trying to teach me math and like she'd be over my shoulder and all I could smell was coffee and cigarettes on her breath. Yeah. And I love, look, I love Mrs. McGonagall. She was one of my favorite teachers. Right. But my God, that breath was like humming. And I'm like, man, that's terrible. And that's probably why I had such hard time like understanding math because she was over my shoulder and I was doing addition. And I'm like, oh God, I can't, I can't pay attention to this. Um, but like the breath, I just, I just never wanted the breath of like coffee and cigarettes, which was why I stayed away from both those items. Yeah. And I get that. And like, I never liked the coffee at first, but now I just, you know, I just get through it and, uh, that's what I drink. So Timmy, we'll have to look that up. If, if you're listening to this and you know of a drink that Timmy should be having, that is a coffee esque drink, but a little bit of a substitute, leave it in the comments. Let us know about what Timmy should be drinking, and he'll go try it out. All right. So you said you had your New Year's re resolution. Let's talk about New Year's Eve real quick. Timmy, we we mentioned New Year's Eve. There's the whole thing. that New Year's Eve, overrated holiday. Not a good holiday. I'm not a big fan of New Year's Eve. Anything that's forcing you to stay up to 12 o'clock, I guess I'm just getting older. I'm not really interested in. I mean, when I was a kid, it was something that I thought was cool, but now it's like, no thanks. I don't, I, I don't want any parts of this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the dichotomy of New Year's Eve when you're from like by the time like when you're a kid to now, like the journey that you go through as as a patron on New Year's Eve is just totally different. Like when you're when you're younger, you can't wait to get to that New Year's party, right? Like in high school, you're like, dude, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Like someone's right. parents are going out. Like we're going to have a huge house party. It's going to be great. And then you get to like 21 and then you do like the closed circuit party, right? Like you go to a bar, you rent, up, rent upstairs out. Everyone dresses to the nines and like, you know, you try to get laid yeah. some, somehow, some way. You always have that dream of like getting laid on New Year's Eve. It'll be great. <laughs> That was probably yeah. every day for me, you know. But yeah, course, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, like as you get older, like you, you couple and you do like the couple thing, right? You go to New right. Year's. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we're all gonna have a nice New Year's. So Eve. and so's having a nice New Year's Eve little thing they set up. Let's go there. Yeah, yeah. I hear and if you. you're and if you're not one of those couples, like if you're single still, you don't get invited, and you're like, what the fuck? Like I thought we were New Year's buddies, and then like. Then, like, after, like, 35, 40, you're just, like, over it. You're, like, I'm done with the whole New Year's thing. Like, you fall asleep before the ball even drops. Like, you care less if if that ball hits the ground. You wake up and you're, like, what the day is it? All right. I guess Tim, I don't know the last time I've actually stayed up and watched the ball drop. I might have been awake, but it's not like I'm, like, oh, the ball's dropping. Let's go, you know? Yeah. And I just think people love a countdown. I will tell you this. I do like a New Year's Eve wedding. I think that's fun. I've been to two New Year's Eve weddings, and they've both been really fun. I enjoyed those. You know, you're drinking. You have the parties going till at least midnight. Like, weddings sometimes, especially when it's good friends and stuff like that, I feel like they cut a little early. It's like you're having the reception, and then it ends, and then you go to the after party and stuff. But, like... If the receptions could last a little bit longer sometimes, I feel like, you know, yeah. and a New Year's Eve party at a wedding. I've always liked one thing I did want to talk about. Do you remember uh, the Y2K uh, issue, the 1999, something our, our kids will know really nothing about, I guess. But uh, the whole, oh, no, what happens when the when the clock hits zero, zero and it's zero, 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 the whole, all the computers are going to shut down. The grid's going to go down. We're all going to die. Y2K. What's going to happen? It's what like a crazy Term time. Like Terminator two. It was like the rise of the machines. So apparently, but no, guess what? Nothing ever happened, Tom. Yeah. My dad was into that. For some reason, I remember he got these tubs and filled them with water. 
we had like yeah we had like six big like tupperware containers filled with water in my basement in case every some something went down he's like well we'll have some water at least survive for a little bit and i'm like what is going on with y2k like how is the computers going down going to stop the water from coming into the house like we had water prior to computers dad i'm pretty sure so yeah in, in the history of civilization there's always been water top. <laughs> <laughs> Indoor plumbing's been going on for quite some time, Dad. And uh, yeah. it was before the computer. And I don't know if those computers are going to affect our pipes, you know? Like, what's going to happen? I think he maybe just thought maybe it would be like everything, the grid goes down and it's a free-for-all, maybe? And They've even made, they've made movies about that. Like, in the end of the world... Like Kevin Costner made Waterworld. The whole world was just made of water. Like he, he <laughs> that was, was Y2K, basically. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's probably and then he only had six tubs of water. Like Yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do with that? Now there's four kids and uh two adults. Do we all get a tub? You know what I mean? Is <laughs> each person and I shouldn't even say tubs. They were freaking they're like these rubber made trash cans, like big, like you know, like ones that you oh, put right. out the front. Yeah, and he filled them with water. And it Jesus. was like, all right, what are we doing here? And what a bitch those were to empty. <laughs> like, <laughs> not very easy to lift up, Tim. And, you, you know, you had to get, like, a pan and start, like, emptying them out. I'm like, oh, Dad, I guess uh, I guess we're around. We survived. You know what, though? I wasn't complaining because that year my friend threw a great, new year's eve party his parents were out of town and he threw a big party and we were all there and it was crazy his his like little house was packed to the gills with people and it got busted and so the person that busted it his dad was uh he was on the wrestling team which i was on so his dad knew my dad and i'm like shit he saw me like there's no me like getting out of this so i went home and was like hey just so you know, like I was at this party that I wasn't drinking, but it was like this and this was going on. Like try to like get ahead of it. What was I drinking that night, Tim? Do you want to know? Hold on. This is in 1999, 2000. You were drinking Cider Jack. Whoa, that's a great guess, Timmy. I was drinking. Now, it's so bizarre that it oh, was like, it, no, it wasn't like a specific drink. So we had sparkling cider right you know sparkling cider that you drink like almost looks like champagne and for some reason i had a bottle of that mixed with vodka <laughs> I, I guess a high school concoction that someone had came up with and said do you want it and i said sure <laughs> oh my god vodka oh. and sparkling cider it was terrible it wasn't good it was no caramel mocha frappuccino i'll tell you that <laughs> what about the mummers timmy are you a fan of the mummers do you like the mummers parade i see there's there's many people uh, like a lot of people love second street second street is a big thing in philadelphia and that's where all the mummers really are they do all their thing right that's where like all the uh headquarters are for the mummers they're all on second street and that's where they develop all their costumes and everything and that's where all like the partying goes down on new year's day which is incredible it's if you've never been down there on two street they don't call it second street it's two street um it, it's just a really cool scene the mummers are a fabric of philadelphia it whether you like them or not it's it's your job as a Philadelphian, and I know you're not really a Philadelphian, Tom, to own it and to defend it because it is it is just as synonymous with Philadelphia as the Eagles, the Phillies, any sports teams. This thing has been going on for years and years and years. They've, they've really fought against, you know, a lot of like BS and political BS that yeah, they were going to shut down the parade for years and years and years, and, and they've done such a great job of, of raising money and, and finding other sponsors and stuff like that um, to really keep it alive. And there's just so much history and um, just familial ties with a lot of these people from South Philly. Um, 
that really invests a lot of time and effort into the mummers. So uh, as much as you or other people may dislike the mummers, I really appreciate what they are, what they do, uh, how much effort, time, and money is put into you know, really having a great time on New Year's Day and and being something that they're not, um, you know, with the the fancy brigade, brigades and all that other stuff. And it's entertaining. Like the the string bands are fun too to watch, and they put on these these shows at City Hall, and it's just a huge competition. I just I think it's really cool. Um, no other really city has it like like us. I mean, obviously New Orleans does something very similar. But I just think it's just part of what Philadelphia is, and I think you got to defend it at all costs. I like it. I'm with you, Timmy. You know what? Maybe next year, Schmidt and Lavelle, we find a way to get in that Mummers Parade, and we go down there and we we do our struts. You know what I mean? It's it's tradition. It's Philadelphia. Now, I will tell you this, talking to some police officers at Graham's, they are not fans of the Mummers Parade. It's, it's a mess. Just a bunch of drunks. It's cold. They're outside. They're waiting. It's a long day. They are not fans of the Mummers Parade, but it's a tradition. And like you said, it is Philadelphia. You know, it's part of uh, what Philadelphia is all about. So you got to have pride where you're from. And I think I'm with you, Timmy. Let's go Mummers Parade. And I will say this on top of what we were talking about, New Year's Eve being overrated. The better part of New Year's Eve is New Year's Day. Yeah. The following day, you get the football on. You get to hang out. You you can go to the Mummers Parade. You drink. You do all that stuff. New Year's Day, greater than New Year's Eve. Am I right? Agreed. All right. <laughs> oh, man, I feel like we're down there. <laughs> Schmidt Lavelle do the Mummers Parade next year. I think we got to book it, Timmy. We'll find a way in there. I know a couple people that are in the Mummers Parade. They can they can slide got, us in. Got to get your Mummers strut on. I mean, I mean one once. of the most iconic moments from Philadelphia Eagles history is Jason Kelsey wearing the Mummers yep. outfit at the uh, at the parade. And God bless him. All right, let's get into some stuff, Tim. Let's talk about we 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 mentioned New Year's Day and the football games on and there was two college football games on and I liked both of these college football games. I thought they were awesome games. I enjoyed watching them. One thing that you mentioned that I totally agree with is the second game didn't end till like 1 a.m. Like what are they doing? We watched Monday Night Raw and then it was the it was the beginning of the second half after Monday Night Raw ends at 11. And the second half is now starting. It's it wasn't over till like twelve fifty or something like that. Yeah, I it, they do this with a lot of sporting events. Like the, uh, I think the NCAA uh, final championship is usually starts around like nine ten on a Monday night. Like, and I get it. They don't cater really to the East Coast. It's more to the West Coast. I get it. Um, but like most of the East Coast cities are are your major sports towns. Like that, these are. This is where your bread's buttered. That's where all the viewership comes from. Um, and I, I just think that like having the games at like the NFL does it right on on Championship Sunday. The games are at three and six thirty. It should it should be something around those, you know that that whole line. Like give me give me six or give me three and six thirty, and I'm happy. And right. as a kid. You know, as a kid growing up loving football, like I think that's that's the wheelhouse. Like you college football is something I used to love to watch and yeah, you know, the pros too as well. And like you want viewership, you want people to be invested in your product. And yeah, there's a lot of a lot of kids that can't stay up and watch these games and after investing themselves in in a full year of college football, watching their team play, and then all of a sudden, you know, Michigan State or not Michigan State, Washington or uh uh, yeah, we're uh, who the hell they play? Jesus Christ! Um, Texas, Texas is 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 finishing the game at one o'clock in the morning, and it was a really good game too. Great game, both games so, were good. I, I liked the Michigan game and uh, Alabama, and I like in kind of two different types of games, but like both at least good games. You know, I, yeah. I enjoyed watching both of them. I love college football, and I'm excited for next year that they when they go to the 12 team playoff. I think that's going to be even more fun because that will be my one knock on college is the other bowl games 
just seemed meaningless. The only two games that matter well, they are these two games. They are meaningless now because you know, half of these players aren't even invested in the game. Um, you know, half of them are sitting out, like they all have NIL deals and they all have, you know, the the NFL to worry about. So most of them sit out the game and I mean, dude, like Florida State, who was supposed to get into that final four, we talked about that, lost sixty three to three to Georgia. Dumb. Like ridiculous and yeah that's an embarrassment they have no argument now like you can't like they made the right decision clearly 63 to 3 and i know they had a lot of players sitting out but come on you know that's your chance to prove everyone wrong you come out you win and see it seems to me like they were scared of it because they knew they saw the writing on the wall like you know we're gonna get our asses kicked either way at least this way we can say oh we had all these guys sitting that's that's the way i look at it timmy i don't know now, one thing I will say, and just a quick shout out, I love Michael Penix Jr. I was telling you that I've watched like four or five of his games. I watched, like for some reason, I was a fan of Oregon. I thought they were good, and I watched the Oregon-Washington game earlier in the year, and I was like, wow, this Penix Jr. is really something. And then later on, as he's playing the USC's, the Stanford's, Oregon again in the in the championship, Utah, I was like so impressed with this guy. I don't know if I've ever seen someone throwing the ball with such velocity, distance, and accuracy all in one. I was like amazed at the way he was just dropping the ball in everywhere with with the you know the swarm going around him. These guys were close to getting to him, and he was getting rid of the ball in time and stuff like that. Very impressed with Michael Penix Jr. Uh oh, now what? No, I mean it's a it's a great it's a great analysis. It's uh, I'm not going to fight you on that, Tom. This is perfectly set. I will say this. The team that grabs Michael Penix Jr. in the NFL draft has got a steal. I'm not saying that they're going to win this game. I don't know what's going on with Michigan. I feel like he can get rid of the ball. I don't know if Michigan, like, for some reason, I think because Alabama is traditionally the powerhouse in the country, and Michigan was able to beat them. It almost makes me feel like, okay, maybe those are the two like big dogs that were in this tournament right now. But I mean, Penix Jr. is just that good. I just hope he doesn't play so well that his draft stock rises so much that, you know, he'd be a great backup for us to have. <laughs> um, do, do we have the uh do we have a counter on here? Like a timer? Yeah. What what minute mark are we at? It says, well, it says 112. That's it started as soon as I signed on, though. Okay. All right. I just want to. So at the 111 mark, you have Penix Jr. as basically the greatest college football player you've ever seen. No, not the greatest college football greatest player. Greatest quarterback you've ever seen. He is very impressive, is what I'm saying. I'm very impressed with you Penix. You said you've never seen a quarterback throw with such velocity, lay the ball in there, throw as accurate. That's what you said. Right. I feel like he has a like a whip on the ball and like it comes out really nice oh. and he's very accurate. I was like shocked at his accuracy. In college, I don't know if I've seen someone throw a better ball than him. I really don't. Uh, like okay. I, I really don't, you know. I mean, he he's really and I, I'm surprised he's like flown under the radar as much as he has, you know. He's a Heisman runner up. But, you know, maybe that's something that motivates him moving forward. We'll see. I don't know. You know, he might be a bust in the NFL. I'm not saying he's, but I would take him just from what I've seen. I I like that kid. In 10 years from now, maybe I can say, ha, refer back to this episode. (laughs) I hope, I hope we can. Hopefully, if that's the case, hopefully he's in a uh, Eagles uniform. All right. So, Timmy, one last thing we wanted to talk about. Before we sign off, just an NFL rules. Big thing happened this past week. They've talked about it to the end of time by now. But the Detroit Lions versus the Dallas Cowboys, the the play that everyone was talking about, a, a lineman declares himself eligible, and they said that it was the other lineman that said it or something like there was a mix-up. How can this happen in the NFL today? I mean, this is ridiculous. And a lot of people are talking about this being like the uh, the script you know they didn't want it. They didn't want this to happen. It's rigged. Yada yada yada. I just think the refs made a bonehead mistake. 
Yeah, no, it seems like that was the case. Uh, it's just, it's strange. Uh, you know, that whole dynamic is like, how do you, you have a guy coming up to you telling you he's, he's checking in eligible. Um, it's a pretty simple play. And yeah, even the referee on the broadcast said that was completely wrong what the ref did. Uh, and honestly, I, after that penalty occurred, I don't know why you don't just kick the extra point and take it into overtime, but yeah, you know, Dan Campbell is a is a different type of breed of coach, and he he wanted to stay aggressive there, and yeah, you know, they end up losing the game. And I mean, it changed the outcome of the NFL NFC East because yeah, you know, if Detroit would have won that game, I mean the the Eagles lost, and they would still be in the driver's seat. But unfortunately, it it, it went the ball dropped the other way. I thought you wanted to talk about the other. I change, do. Huh? Okay, so there's a play. In the NFL, it's a rule where if you're going for a touchdown and say you're at the one-yard line, you're just about to go in and you get hit and you fumble the ball and the ball goes out of the end zone, that is then called a touchback. The other team receives the ball. And I've been on both sides of that where it's been to a, an advantage and where it's been to a disadvantage. And I just, I don't love the rule. I don't think it's a rule that they're talking about this year. The funny thing is I mentioned it to you that I don't love the rule. And the more I'm like thinking about the rule, so I guess what else can they do? Is it corny just to say, okay, you fumble the ball, it goes out of the end zone. You get it at the spot where you fumbled. But like when you fumble the ball and it goes out of bounds, you get it where it goes out of bounds. You know, no one recovers it. And so when no one recovers it, it's hard for me to say, well, the other team gets it now that no one recovers it. Someone did bring up a good point to me, though. They said, well, that's their end zone. So if the ball goes out of their end zone, maybe it's their ball, where if you have tackled them in their end zone, it's a safety. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I personally love the rule obviously when it happens against your team you hate it but it's the ultimate penalty and there's nothing like it really in sports if you think about it you're about to score a touchdown say you take the lead and you make the mistake of of fumbling that ball through the end zone and it goes out of bounds and the other team gets the ball it's the ultimate fail which is incredible so there's so much risk with those players, right? Because a lot of the times these players are careless with the ball right around the goal line. They're reaching right. you know, for the pylon or they're trying to score a touchdown. And that's that's fine. You know, that's well within their right. But there comes risk with that. You better hold on to that ball because if you don't, guess what? It's going back the other way. So, I mean, if you have a, a calculated player that doesn't want to take that risk, you know, you you try to hold on to that ball or or get it back at the one yard line or or tuck it and just take the tackle and then try on the next play. But um I I love the rule. I think it should stay. Uh it, it again, it's the ultimate really like do or die. Like if if you don't hold on to that ball, it goes back to the other team and it could seriously change the outcome of a game. Right. It has. It has, it has. in the past. And I will say this too, it's not always all also, it gives the defender that, like, you know, it's it's a it's a rare play. It might happen a couple times a year, you know what I mean? But you gives that defender the chance to make a huge play. You know, they yeah. punch it out, it goes out of the end zone. Next thing you know, it's a touchback going the other way. Not only did you not score when you're on the one, we get the ball at the 25 or the 20. I don't know if they give it at the 20 on this. But I will say this too. If that rule was not intact it would take away one of my favorite plays of all time. And, Timmy, do you know what play I'm referring to? No. That would be, I want to say it was the 1994 Super Bowl. Don Beebe chasing down, uh, yeah. Leon Lett knocking that ball out of bounds, and they got the ball back, which would have set the record for most points scored by a team in the Super Bowl. So it didn't let Dallas have that record. And it was just like amazing hustle play, never give up, you're down a ton. And Don Beebe, like people refer to that play often about people that, you know, just have that grit on the field, that determination, that scrappy, never give up hustle type of things that Philadelphia fans particularly love. And I know Buffalo fans do too. But that play is one that I remember 
fondly. And so as I thought more about the rule, I just, I don't know if I like, I don't see a better rule. And like, it, 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 I think to your point, I think it is kind of a cool rule now that I, that I think about it more, you know, like, it's just like, it's a wild card. It could happen. And it's just this crazy rule that, Hey, the rules are rule, you know? So how would they change it? They're talking about changing it. What, what would the change be? They get the ball I mean, and fumbled it. I, I think, well, who knows? I mean, maybe they put it at, at the two and a half yard line and they, they retain the ball. But I think the, the biggest rule in football that needs to be changed is the overtime rule. They need to go to the college football overtime rule. And everyone's been saying that for years and years and years. And the NFL continues to be porous at overtime football. I don't know why they continue to to do the same shit over and over and over again. It's just you should just go to the college football rules and, and that's it. Totally agree, Timmy. Maybe they will figure that out. We figured it out. And we figured out another episode of Schmidt and Lavelle. A great episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not doing it already, now's the time. Hit that follow, that share, that subscribe. Get notifications. Schmidt and Lavelle, the hottest growing podcast in all of podcasts. Tell your friends. Tell your family. We're not kidding. Tell your friends. Tell your family. God damn it. Get out there and tell your kid, tell your friends. Tell your family. <laughs> Timmy. Another great episode. Once again, we got the waxing coming up this Friday. We hope uh, y'all are looking forward to that as much as I am. Anything you'd like to say to all the Schmidt and Lavelleites out there before we sign off? Tom, I've been thinking about my sign-offs. And, I, and that quote that I always put out there really doesn't make much sense. It doesn't really apply to, to a lot. It's just a favorite movie quote of mine. All right? I do love Captain James Hook. And... I wonder what the world would be like, but tonight I want to quote, since we're sticking on football, Joe Kane. Tom, let's put the women and children to bed. Let's go looking for dinner. I love it. What a movie, the program. Till next week, Diana. Diana.